Thank you very much. Today I'm going to present on a product, a technology that can play a very major role in the energy transition, enabling offshore hydrogen as well as carbon capture and storage. We know that the energy transition needs to accelerate, and when it comes to products and technology, it means that it requires solutions that have a very high level of maturity. Solutions that are proven, reliable, and thereby available at scale. Only in this way can we provide enough systems to really power the energy transition that we have ahead of us. Secondly, we see that green hydrogen is most efficiently generated and produced when it's done so as close as possible to the offshore and renewable energy source. Secondly, we see that um, on the North Sea in the coming years, as much CO2 will be injected, re-injected in depleted gas fields as natural gas has been produced over the years. So this combination means that there's a huge pipeline demand, a, a, a huge potential market that drives the need for pipes and solutions for both CO2, carbon capture and storage, as well as hydrogen. A thermoplastic composite pipe, a novel technology, is the best solution for this. What is thermoplastic composite pipe? We've developed this coming out of the aerospace industry and deployed it at start in a natural gas offshore business. It's a continuous pipe. We developed it as a continuous production process, making very long spoolable pipe, endless pipe that can handle the highest pressures inside as well as outside and allow our clients to spool the pipes on either reels or on pallets. This enables our clients to use very small vessels to install these pipes offshore and subsea. And by using small vessels, they can reduce not only total installed cost, they can also reduce the CO2 footprint. But the true and big uh, disruption in this technology is the fact that composite pipe is completely agnostic to any fluid and any gas. Again, originally developed in the natural gas offshore environment, we see now that this, these materials that we have developed, they can handle hydrogen, they can handle CO2, they can handle water, gas, chemicals, pretty every type of fluid and every type of gas up to the highest pressures of 700 bar or the deepest waters. So besides a lower total installed cost, besides a smaller C a CO2 footprint, it's really the disruption in terms of no corrosion, thereby enabling CO2 transfer, as well as no embrittlement, thereby enabling hydrogen transfer. These are key elements that current conventional steel technologies cannot handle. Steel becomes brittle by influence of hydrogen, and steel corrodes within three years by influence of CO2, especially when it is contaminated, becoming extremely corrosive. But still then, without a real track record, one cannot help and enable a new transition to, to happen. Especially in offshore, uh, track record is absolutely key and it is a prerequisite. A few examples that I will share with you here today. This example that you see here is this pipe. It is operating as we speak in 2,000 meter water depth in Guyana. It is injecting gas and CO2 in subsea wells and it's, done, it's doing this at a pressure of 700 bar and an equivalent of 40,000 barrels of injection per day. Another example is a similar system for total energies on a subsea pallet deployed in 1500 meter water depth in West Africa, enabling lower cost and smaller CO2 footprint. This is a simple water injection system, but everything that we have learned on these projects, we apply today for hydrogen as well as CO2 transfer. And this is where the, the transition 
comes in, and this is where real track records and experience in proven and validated markets enables the acceleration of the transition. What we see here is six pipe systems that left our factory in the Netherlands today on their way to Wilhelmshaven in Germany, where as of February onwards, 8% of German demand for natural gas will flow through our pipes. By, the, by the, uh, the happening of the Nord Stream pipeline that blew up, uh, within one year, we've been able to produce these pipeline systems, enabling Germany to really, uh, how to call it, transfer 8% of their gas needs to a different entry location in, in Germany. And the interesting thing here is that while they first will use these pipes for natural gas import, after three years, our client Tree Energy Solutions, a green energy company, they will reuse these same pipes for CO2 export. So as a technology firm, as a company that had developed and introduced uh, high-end products into the marketplace, we actually see the transition happening inside our products. And the last example of how track record is key in enabling a transition, this is a nice example with our client Life, also a, a, a green hydrogen company from France, where we will, they will produce green hydrogen offshore Belgium, and it will be uh, pumped through our pipeline to shore, thereby enabling uh, the use of the pipeline to store the hydrogen, and thereby increasing the yield of offshore wind. As you know, in a cable you cannot store electrons, in a pipe you can store molecules, and so producing hydrogen offshore as close as possible to the renewable energy source enables an increase in the yield of offshore wind by 10%. <coughs> so based on material know-how um, that we've developed over the years using different materials, a digital design approach where we are able to understand and predict the behavior of our pipes and our materials on influence of fluid, temperature, and time, we are able to predict the performance of our systems for 30 or 40 years design life, including end of life, and able to uh, predict the failure as well as the performance um, without doing any additional testing. So we can predict it whether we put in natural gas, water, uh, chemicals, hydrogen, or CO2, anything we can include in our design approach and predict the performance first time right. That in combination with a manufacturing technology that is um, proprietary, we keep it secret, and that allows us to have a very high throughput in production, we can support the transition in uh, carbon capture storage as well as green hydrogen. O offshore as well as onshore. Here a picture of our, of our uh, manufacturing plant. We have a fully scaled manufacturing plant west of Amsterdam, where we are now at the third generation of equipment, uh, a technology proprietary developed that we copy and paste to other places around the world. The, some of the highlights one plant is 30 million, 30 million in capex. It generates a 90 million revenue opportunity with a 25 million EBITDA result. And with that, it enables us uh, to grow autonomously from this moment onwards. So what are we doing? We are um, now starting with our last funding round that uh, will propel us into a continuous mode of growth. In the, in the transition, we need equipment. We need electrolyzers, we need uh, fuel cells, we need pipes, valves, and compressors. Um, in the space of the connections, composite pipe and strom is a unique player. We compete with steel that have fundamental issues with hydrogen as well as with corrosion that we do not suffer. So it is an interesting uh, area to invest in. What are we asking for? We are now raising our last round of 30 million euros. We are growing quickly as we see here. We have 33 million revenue this year. 
We are EBITDA positive. Last year we had 11 million. We are seeing a very strong growth. We have a backlog of 60 uh, million. As I've shown you, we have a proven track record, a track record in natural gas, but also now already in CO2 transfer and shortly in hydrogen. So we, are, we will grow through the transition. We will enable the transition, but on the basis of a proven track record, a validated technology in the marketplace. Thank you very much. Thank you.